the last two parts of your question regarding informal exchanges and uh, liquidity facilities that are made available to the uh, through the Federal Reserve and um, and, and through other uh, other sources on the informal exchange piece, bankers are creative. Uh, bankers will uh, swap those uh, deposits overnight so that um, that uh, customers can remain protected. Uh, there's a little bit of a cost in doing that. We have to think through if we become more reliant upon that. Um, it's not uh, it's not an automatic item. It takes a registration. It takes uh, a process to do it. But those facilities are used by bankers and regulators. Isn't that also it doesn't burden the overall system. It, People can affect opt in or opt out of using that tool, right? Uh, that's that's correct. It doesn't burden the system, and it's understood, and it's generally considered to be a safe practice. Uh, regarding uh, the availability of liquidity tools uh, in uh, preventing a crisis, I I think removing stigma I think is an important thing. I think the current Federal Reserve facility uh, that uh, came up uh, uh, after the uh, SVB crisis uh, has been useful. It's helped banks uh, that uh, had securities that um, are high quality assets, has helped them monetize them or at least be able to use them in the near term. Uh, that I think is also helping affect uh, a little bit less reluctance or shame in using uh, the discount window. Uh, and frankly, uh, many banks don't use the discount window. Uh, and I've never known a regulator, at least in the community bank space, uh, to uh, think about that in a, in a challenging way or in a, uh, in a difficult way. I think FDIC already has more powerful tools, prompt corrective action, uh, to address banks that are having concerns. Um, and, and nobody wants to be in that PCA space. Thank you. Uh, others on the panel? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll add to that. On, on the discount w window point, you're exactly right. Uh, the Fed should not have to use 13.3 uh, to provide liquidity for, for a banking run. Um, this has been a problem really since the Fed's uh, creation. And, you know, arguably, the Fed had, had the discount window um, uh, in place um, and more active. You might have not even seen the establishment of the uh, FDIC uh, during, during the Great Depression. So I think this is something that deserves a uh, real serious looks. Uh, as you know, Senator, there are some changes made during the Dodd-Frank Act about the transparency around the 13-3, and that has kind of added more to, um, I think, bankers' reluctance uh, to use it. Uh, in addition, supervisors have historically very much dis disfavored it. So I think there's some balance, uh, balancing that readjustments that need to be done on the supervisory process to make it uh, bankers feel that Particularly if they are seeing immediate um, uh, liquidity needs, uh, and again, these are these are healthy banks that are simply just dealing with a unexpected liquidity shock. That the discount window is there. Yes, friends, progress is finally being made. Top House Republicans have just overcome the first hurdle on passing the next spending bill. With our federal government focus on passing this legislation, state lawmakers are taking matters into their own hands to approve more relief for their residents. Additional financial aid is going out in several states in many different ways. My dear friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video. Also to say thank you for being part of this community. Tomorrow, which is Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. My friends, if you would like to enter these weekly giveaways, Please click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, friends, the greater your chances of winning these weekly giveaways. Today, the House of Representatives began debating the first of 12 fiscal 2024 spending bills. This is as lawmakers edge towards a looming showdown with a Democratic-led Senate that may trigger a government shutdown this coming fall. The House voted 217 to 206, roughly along party lines, to adopt a measure that opened debate on military construction and Veterans Affairs Appropriations Bill. This is amid signs that Republican leaders were near an agreement with hardline conservatives who have demanded cuts that would leave next year's overall spending at fiscal 2022 levels. Hardline conservatives, including members of the House Freedom Caucus, has warned Republican leaders this week that they would not support appropriation bills without assurances on spending. 
Freedom Caucus member Andy Ogles told reporters that the two sides were trying to finalize such a deal. This legislation would fund agriculture programs, rural development initiatives, and the Food and Drug Administration. Representative Don Bacon said the legislation could also lose support from the center if last minute changes led to further cuts in spending. He stated if these guys keep pushing for more cuts, it may be in jeopardy. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and other Republican leaders hope this week's votes will give them the upper hand against a Democratic led Senate. Each chamber is expected to pass its own spending legislation and then try to hammer out compromise bills that can be sent to Democratic President Joe Biden. Lawmakers have until the current fiscal year expires on September 30th, 2023, to fend the U.S. government or risk a partial government shutdown. But with hardliners pushing for lower spending, the House and Senate are at least $120 billion apart with Senate appropriators aiming at $1.59 trillion. House Majority Leader Steve Scalise said, negotiations between the two chambers could begin during the annual August recess in an effort to move them towards agreement in September. This past Monday, President Biden voted to veto the House Republican spending bills if they made it to his desk, saying they backed away from the deal. The state of Connecticut was not alone this spring when legislators and Governor Ned Lamont approved the largest income tax cut in state history. Nine other states cut their personal or income tax rates earlier this year, pledging tens of billions of dollars in relief to their constituents over the next few years. But Connecticut did stand out nationally by funneling most of that nearly $500 million in relief to its poor and middle-class residents. Governor Lamont and legislators from both parties enacted a total relief package worth $287 million this fiscal year and $487 million in 2024 to 2025. The bill involved reducing the lowest two marginal income tax rates, the first rate reduction since the mid-1990s. The rate changes are expected to save many middle-class households $300 to $500 each year. Officials also bolstered the income tax credit for Connecticut's working poor from 30.5% to 40% of the federal earned income tax credit. This is expected to provide an average of about $210 more annually for more than 200,000 Connecticut households that earn less than $60,000 per year. A third form of income tax relief in the package involves expanding an existing exemption for certain pension and annuity earnings. But while Governor Lamont targeted the majority of his aid on the poor and middle class, both his fellow Democrats in the House and Senate majorities, as well as minority Republicans, went even further in a progressive direction. They stipulated that the tax relief would begin to phase out for singles earning more than $105,000 per year, and for couples topping off at $210,000 a year. Well, my marvelous and beautiful friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this Wednesday. My dearest friends, thank you so very, very much for being here and for being part of this community. This coming Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. My dear friends, if you would like to enter these weekly giveaways, please click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, dear friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed week.